Welcome to Martin Makes It. I'm Martin, and I'm diving back into the small world of scale modeling after more than 25 years. Follow along as I make a ton of mistakes and possibly learn from them. I wouldn't expect amazing results or a how-to tutorial, but I do hope these videos are entertaining. I'm also passionate about other maker stuff like 3D printing and Arduino projects, and that kind of stuff will show up in my builds from time to time. Anyway, let's get on with my first model, the SBD Dauntless from Reval. Now my dad gave this to me about eight years ago when I was thinking about getting back into model building, but it's been sitting in a box ever since then. Also in that box was a fine scale modeler book that featured this model, so that's why I picked this one to do first. Some of the stuff I do to this model is taken directly from there. Anyway, so far I've just been removing the parts for the fuselage in the cockpit and cleaning them up. This is my first time painting with an airbrush. I practiced a little bit on spoons right before this. And right here I'm using Mr. Color Lacquer Paints. This is the Iwata Neo airbrush, and you'll notice I did put the lid back on the airbrush and a little bit of paint splashed out. And doing a little bit of dry brushing here with a lighter shade of interior green, which you can't really tell. And now I'm painting the pilot and the gunner. And I started with a Zenithal highlight technique as seen on many painting channels. It went okay. For brushing, I only had Mr. Lacquer paints at the time, so it was not a fun experience. Applying the black Mr. Weathering color here, I've never used it before, so I wasn't sure what to expect. But you really can't see too much of the interior and it isn't really that detailed, so I didn't bother too much. Gluing in our Brave Pilot. Now this piece I wish I hadn't glued in. Um, I ended up trimming it off later and it just got in the way. Gluing in the pilot section here. And the tow hook is another part that I wish I hadn't put in because it just ended up getting in the way and I, I cut it off later. The bomb holder as well. I ended up having to work around that a ton, but I managed not to destroy it the entire time I was handling the model. So one of the tips in the fine scale modeler magazine was to just use super glue for everything. Use it to glue the fuselage, to fill gaps, just use it everywhere. But I only had this Harper Freight super glue and it really wasn't the right glue for the job and it ended up causing me a lot of headaches. And right there you can see I used a clamp to hold the end of the fuselage together and that ended up making it go out of round and the engine cowling didn't line up later. So one of the odd things that the magazine did was to glue the top half of the wings directly to the fuselage and then cut slits in the bottom so that you could get little clips in there. And I just went ahead and followed along blindly. I mean, it turned out okay, I guess, but in hindsight, I would have assembled the wings as a sub-assembly. And those holes I carved ended up being visible with the bottom wings attached, so I ended up having to deal with that later. And while I waited for that to dry, I put in the instrument panel, which is just a cutout decal, and there isn't really any other detail in there. Just attaching the bottom of the wing here. It was pretty difficult to get aligned because of the things I did, but uh, you know, it's fine. I picked up some Tamiya putty because I felt like the super glue was making my life harder than it should be. This Dauntless kit doesn't have holes in the dive brakes, just impressions. So I drilled them out. Now in the video, it looks like maybe I used a hand drill for all those holes. 
uh, because that's how I made it look. But, uh, but I didn't, I used a Dremel. These dive breaks were the most annoying part of the whole build from drilling them out and then having to clean up each hole. It was a real pain. I carefully opened the bag with the canopy. I used floor polish to protect the clear parts. I'm not sure if it helped, and some of the polish got pulled up by the canopy masking, which you'll see later. I had a lot of trouble getting the canopy attached. I used white glue first, but that got pulled up by the canopy mask. The fuselage is also thinner than the canopy due to all the clamps that I used. I went over it with super glue later. This joint is probably one of the worst on the model. The horizontal stabilizers left pretty large gaps, and I sort of filled them. Just like the canopy, these are some of the worst joints on the model. Laying out the tape for the canopy masking, I cut the tape into squares and then used the right angles made by the tape cuts in the corners of the canopy and then trimmed the excess with a fresh blade. Now I probably should have read an actual tutorial on the best way to do this, but my thought at the time was, eh, this is fine. And you can see the floor polish and the white glue getting pulled up by the tape here. And for my first time masking a canopy, I can say I did a mostly okay job. Pretty, pretty not bad. The engine cowling didn't align very well, and again, this is due to the clamps. I ended up having to squeeze the fuselage together while holding the cowling. More putty and super glue. You can see here where the slots I cut are visible. And after looking at reference pictures, I figured I could 3D print something that would cover the area and be more detailed and accurate. I airbrushed the inside of the die brakes red. This red ended up being too dark compared to the reference photos I found, but I just went with it. And here the model's ready for paint. I painted the interior green on the canopy first so that if you looked at it from the inside, it would be green. I painted the bottom in light gold gray, uh, which isn't the right color, but it is a color. So, and painted the die brakes in light gold gray as well. I painted the top in intermediate blue, which was not the color that I wanted. I actually wanted the turquoise color that you see on so many Dauntlesses, uh, which intermediate blue is not. And now I'm painting it in the turquoise color. Not 100% happy with the color it ended up being, but it's fine. Painted the gun and the engine in aluminum. 
masked off the wheel hubs so that I could paint the tires black. I'm not saying I want to buy a laser cutter just for circles like this, but I kind of do. And now I'm prepping the bombs. Oh, oopsie. painting the bombs olive drab. And sorry about the camera angle, I'm still trying to find a good place to place my camera while I'm doing airbrushing. Now I haven't mentioned it before, but I'm planning on displaying the Dauntless in flight, in a dive, because I really wanna see the dive brakes. So the landing gear needs to be in the up position. Normally you would insert the landing gear through the wings when you put them together, which obviously I haven't done. I'm putting on a coat of clear so I can add the decals. Uh, that little stand there I 3D printed and I'll uh, leave a link in the description. I wish I'd purchased some decal softener because I think it would have really helped with all the raised rivets. I'm applying Mr. Mark Setter, that's the blue cap brush there. This tow hook was a real pain. And since I haven't really been following the directions for a while, I completely forgot about the antenna and the pitot tube. And after this, I did another clear coat off camera to protect the decals. Now I'm using black Mr. Weathering color for the engine and panel lines, oil stains, and just, you know, general weathering. The exhaust staining was more difficult than I anticipated, and I'm still not sure what the best approach is, but uh, I'll look up some different guides for next time.
So as I mentioned before, the plane is going to be displayed in flight, which means the prop blades have got to go. And here I mounted the hub to my Black & Decker lathe. More exhaust staining. I'm applying aluminum paint to simulate paint chipping. I probably could have done a little bit more across the whole model, but um, my next model is going to have a ton of chipping, so I didn't want to go too overboard. And so with the tow hook on there, the model is effectively done minus the flat coat. Um, but I wasn't sure how I wanted to hold the model while I applied the final coats. So I designed and printed the stand that I was going to end up displaying the model on. And now just uh, adding the flat coat. Peeling off the canopy mask here. The canopy is actually a pleasant surprise and uh, looked pretty good. And here my cat Reese is helping me remove the canopy mask. And here it is all done. Hey, thanks for watching and uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. I appreciate you taking the time.